Hello everybody, um, this is actually from a while ago, I forget how old, I think this is about maybe two weeks old now, I haven't posted in a while, but we're going to talk about um, general game design of the boss, maybe other ways to beat this boss, a lot of people have obviously beaten this boss a lot, um, it's really no secret, I actually think I went a little too heal heavy, but as you see over here I do have death store resistances, and I actually should have put on that model top just for a bit extra damage. I have way too many heals. I have a uh, Death Store resistance there. Point blank, all that. I have the heals right there and the stress heals. Healing salves. And I might have one more set. Yeah, see, I have way too many heals. I really should have put on the, um, probably the Milk Soak bandages later. Or maybe some blind tokens. So, the first phase I'm not really going to narrate. I'm going to more talk about the design of the first phase. And we'll pause and go to now. I really enjoy the first phase of this boss. It's something that we haven't seen Red Hook do before, and it does add something other than just blast everybody. So the first phase, first phase definitely makes you do a weird preparation phase once you know it's happening. So your first time through, you're probably going to kill a whole bunch of these guys, really delay the fight, and take a lot of unnecessary stress damage. Therefore, it's just a very unique style. Now, I pretty much get pseudo screwed here I'll say I guess um it's on three people it's still doable due to the death door thing but um like I said there's a whole bunch of stuff there's uh take aim solo man of arms has some nice stuff the plague doctor can do molding vapors so once you find out that this first stage right here is all about just getting ready the final boss isn't as hard it's when you use all of your preparation stuff on this phase and then you get to the final boss and go oh shoot that was not supposed to happen. But like I said, I think it's a really nice idea to have all the um, eye socks go. Um, they obviously transform. Uh, what well, takes two rounds at minimal or three? Let me see. I believe it's if you let them do the. Yeah, I think it's three rounds. Let me see. I don't quite understand all their mechanics yet, but it but it is an interesting idea. As I said, it's not all about the raw damage. This part's designed well, it's to teach your patience, it's to rough you up a little bit, and just to outlast this stage of the boss, which I find very useful. Once we get to the actual boss boss section of this, that, where it for me, kind of falls apart. Um, I don't think, actually a little air right there, I probably should have used the uh, healing item to get rid of three stress. Because in all reality, I see yeah, Amar. Now I'm popping off all of that. So how much stress is he gonna have? Like seven? Yeah. So I should have used that, but that, that's beside the point. We're talking about a uh, game design. So honestly, I mean, a it looks good as well. The uh, boss looks good. That's something Red Hook has done very well in Darkest Dungeon 2. I don't know if I've ever complained about how enemies are looked or designed. And once again, talking about the design and the look, obviously how this boss comes in is very well done. Look at that film. I think that's a um, real good start and. This is kind of where the boss for me just kind of turns into, I guess, like a bliff fist. Um, like I said, that was a mistake because I had to use Inspiring Tune there to get all the stress off. But pretty much at this point, I just started doing Death Door Resistance because, I mean, other than that, there's really not much else to do other than try to get DOT on them and, um, yeah, try to get DOT and out, uh, outlast them. And the reason why I messed up here in terms of boss mechanics and design is that um, the healing obviously gets reduced over time and it obviously just keeps blasting your ass for 30 damage at a time, which is why we do the death store resistance stuff. We do bring on healing salves. Like I said, you should only really do that for about the first turn and everything should always be about damage, which is um, where I kind of messed up with Inspiring Tune as well as... Uh, having to do, I forget what else I had to do, I reposted. But yeah, it is a glorified, um, what's it called, sleeper from, uh, uh, what's that called, Colors of Madness DLC. In my opinion, and strictly in terms of design, not difficulty, the boss from Colors of Madness to Sleeper is probably one of the more poorly designed bosses in the game. And the reason why I would argue is one of the more poorly designed is that it doesn't make you do anything different, right? When this boss comes on through, it doesn't force me to do anything different other than just focus on raw damage, maybe try to get like some dodges or protection tokens up. Other than that, 
this is a complete race against time. There's no way I'm going to outlast this. Eventually, my heals are not going to work. Unless you get like a Hellion that could possibly get three or maybe even all four on her and just find a way to keep her alive for three turns while, you know, your other three heroes aren't necessarily on death's door the whole time. This is why also Holy Waters would be really good to get rid of all this stuff. That's the only other skill that makes you, I'll say, pseudo think about what you're doing, but even then, not really. I mean, for the most part, all you have to do is bring in Holy Waters. Like for the Plague Doctor, her healing trinket could have just been Holy Waters, and this would be resolved. As you can see, now I can't heal. I can only stress heal. Completely useless. I can't stress heal on the crush anymore. I mean, we gotta do it for damage, but that's my point. I kind of focus too hard on heals. I forgot how quickly, as you can see, I can only give 10. So that's kind of my point. If you focus too much on heals, you're never going to be able to do that. I could have at least used a, um, what's it called? I could have at least used the Holy Water on the Man of Arms so he's not blinded or doing reduced damage because he's essentially going to be my damage machine until everyone else around the, uh, faulted, what's it called, Fault, focus fault, uh, loses. So, but like I said, we do just keep obviously increasing our death door resistance. It's a RNG based strategy. I still don't have everything sadly. Um, I don't play this game enough to have everything unlocked, all the heroes at their best stuff. And uh, this was my second time going in. But um, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much the boss fight right there. I mean that's that's why it's kind of boring. The shackles I still think are, is by far the still best designed boss. And um, even since the recent patch, I think they got a lot stronger. I fought the Shackles like a month ago, and I actually had only two people survive right at the end there. It was actually really close for me to losing, which was not normal for the Shackles. Now, it could have been they took away some of my stuff and items I used to have, so maybe that's why it felt so much closer than normal. But um, I do think the Shackles are harder, and I do think the Shackles offer the most complex boss fight you will do so far. I mean, obviously, there's two more acts to do. But in terms of changing your strategy, um, I think easily the uh, shackles are still the best. And I think, I don't even remember what I do. I probably heal. I should just go for damage. Sorry, I just want to see what I do. Yeah, so I go for damage. Yeah, and that's kind of my point. It's the same thing you do against the sleeper. You just always go for damage. Um, with the death door items in this game and the potential to get some outside of combat as well through the candle system, you can probably keep most of your people alive. I probably have them around 85% maybe. Um, so, and yeah, honestly, that's why you, I really needed to. The relationship's kind of like the... Um, Darn, I'm bringing on name. Sorry, guys. I haven't played this in a while. Seething Sigh. There we go. Like the Seething Sigh, eventually stress gets to be too much. So just have your relationships be as good as you can. Um, stress heals are always good right there. But yeah, I just took way too long to do this fight. You really just need quicker damage. You need more DOT. You need people to get any more crits. I, I kind of fumbled the beginning of this fight. I was still trying to do a little bit too much of living. And right here, I'm not even sure why I'm questioning. If I want to still say, that shouldn't have been a question. It should have been a straight DOT. I mean, it got resisted, but... You know, you can't you can't assume you're gonna get resisted the whole time. But yeah, other than that, I took a while to do it. I think the boss design is good aesthetically. The first part definitely makes up for the second part. I think the second part's lackluster to be honest. All it does is just keep firing the big beam at you, um, reducing your heals, adding heart. That's it. I mean it's nothing it's really really nothing to it to be honest. It's just a blasting machine because I, I, I'm not sure why it's that way. I'm not sure if Red Hook is struggling to figure out a balance with one uh, one boss actions or if this is kind of how all the bosses are going to be with a little gimmick. I don't know. I think I do finally lose somebody. There's only so many death stores you can say, yeah. But I, I mean, at this point, I won. I think it literally I think it would tick itself out next turn as well anyways. But yeah, so I mean, it's really just a race once you get to that boss, and since you actually do get a, technically a lot of preparation time before it, and no death door check, the boss isn't actually that hard once you know what it's going to do. And like I said, I kind of played poorly and I still beat it. Um, so overall, the design is... it's okay. I just kind of wish it had more moves than just firing its massive laser over and over again. But um... It's not bad. It's less egregious than when the Seething Side came out first. I don't know if I have any immediate fixes for this boss. Um, 
the first phase is amazing. It's just a, it's different. It looks nice. It's not damaging. It's just the first phase really sets up the second phase, and I understand the second phase obviously works off the first phase. I'm just trying to think if there's any other way that you could just make it less boring. The second phase is just boring. It's just a it's a race against time because you're not going to outlast it. You're not going to heal past it. So you're just resorting to damage and not to pick on Red Hook. But that's what they said they didn't want to do is have you do a race of damage. And this literally last boss is just like how much damage can you pump out without thinking. So maybe I'm nitpicking there. But in my mind, it's like you didn't want it all to be. And I kind of get that's what the first part is, is like, haha, you wasted all your damage. But like once you realize you don't do anything the first half and then you just unload your crit tokens in the second. I don't know. Second part's definitely a little weak. Looks great. The only other thing I could maybe think is maybe um maybe if it only uses its AoE once, but maybe it adds like a stun, or maybe it can like pull some I don't know, something a little different. I mean, you'd have to decrease the damage though if you're gonna stun or pull somebody because you can't pop off 60 damage a turn and stun somebody. Imagine the shackles. Imagine each shackle popping off 30 damage per hero. You'd never beat that boss, right? Because they can stun, add vulnerability tokens. So you would never want to keep the same level of damage and add stuns or pulls. But maybe adding a stun or pull, or maybe a different mechanic where the person's observed has to like I don't, I don't know. Just it just feels a little too straightforward, but. It, it's not bad. I mean, I don't have any major complaints. I think overall it looks great. It's just, it's honestly, I know I said the Seething Psy was the sleeper. This is like truly the sleeper. I got one mode. It's the almost blast your whole party if you allow it. And that's all I keep doing. So once again, it's not bad, but I think Shackles are still number one. Seething Psy with the updates, I'd actually say number two. I believe with the updates, if you um, stop the lungs now, it doesn't use its... um special ability which actually makes the lungs way more interactive than it used to be then obviously the focus fault right now is kind of feeling like how the seething side was you don't really care what the boss is going to do as long as you in my opinion if you get only two of the heroes observed i got three but if you end up with only two of zero heroes observed you'll probably have enough damage to pump it out before uh, both of those people die especially if you have some uh, death store increasing items like i did thank you for watching